Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 3rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start today with a couple of wireless vulnerabilities. First vulnerabilities in the Realtek RTL 8710C module. Now, you may not necessarily know what a Wi Fi module is exactly in a particular device. These modules are typically more targeted towards IoT devices. They're sort of very lightweight and don't include some of the more sophisticated features that you find in larger devices, even in larger portable devices. The problem here is two stack-based buffer overflows that happen as part of the WPA2 handshake. These vulnerabilities were found by Voodoo, a company that's of specialized in that kind of thing. Actually, back in February, they already disclosed a number of vulnerabilities in a similar module. Any device built after January 11th should already be patched. If you have an earlier device, then you need to apply a patch that was released by Realtek as part of their software development kit. So not really something for the end user to do, but uh, the device manufacturer essentially needs to release an updated firmware that is then loaded into the device. The second vulnerability discovered by Trustwave does affect Huawei LTE sticks, in particular the model E3372. These are somewhat popular in Europe, often sold on eBay, but not that commonly used in the US. The vulnerability is actually pretty simple. It's just bad permissions on a file on the system that's being installed as you are starting to use this particular LTE stick. It then could be overwritten by any user of the system and then essentially lead to privilege escalation. What's really more notable here is that Huawei essentially didn't react to the vulnerability report, was first reported by Trustwave early October last year and only uh, this week Huawei has responded and will eventually release a patch. Given that this vulnerability isn't really all that terribly serious uh, being only a privilege escalation vulnerability it's uh, probably okay here for Trustwave to release some of the details. You can probably also easily fix this yourself by hardening the permissions on the respective file. And Norton LifeLock, uh, which I guess is what uh, Norton slash Symantec Antivirus is called these days, has released an interesting new feature, a crypto coin miner, apparently for Ethereum. The reasoning, according to their press release, is that, well, uh, antivirus will probably kill any other crypto miner that you are going to install on your system so they may as well provide you with one that they will not kill and there's some truth to that with uh, the heavy use of crypto coin miners by criminals as part of malware payloads it has become a common practice to label software like xm rick and such of course as malicious and antivirus will often block it On the other hand, many crypto coin miners like this that you find on random websites are often not exactly doing what they're telling you they're doing. For example, they may actually mine on someone else's behalf instead of for your account. It's not exactly clear how this uh, Norton LifeLock crypto coin miner will work. It likely is part of a mining pool that is operated by Norton LifeLock and as a result probably Norton will also get some uh, fee for running that uh, crypto coin miner pool. And the open PGP RNP library, which is uh, maintained by Mozilla, in particular used uh, by Mozilla Thunderbird, has uh, fixed a pretty embarrassing flaw that first became apparent in Thunderbird. The problem here is that as your keys are being unlocked in order to, for example, encrypt or uh, decrypt uh, messages, if uh, then in the library uh, the lock function is called, which 
it should re-encrypt the key. Well, uh, that's not happening and the key remains readable in the clear. So not sure who else, but Thunderbird is uh, using this uh, library, but they need to update and uh, then release a patch for the particular software. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.